Hi, sorry I'm late. We haven't even started, so you're good. All right, kick it off, Jean. Okay, we're gonna do a little Christmas carol. Her, oh dear. Her angels sing, okay? Starting maybe, how's this too high? That's pretty yes. good. There we go. One, two, ready, and go. <laughs> to gather with these three illustrious former leaders of the Arts Partnership because um, I have a, a connection to all three of them as well as the organization. So Linda was executive director of the symphony when I, before I had this job and took me out for lunch in uh, probably April of 2010 and encouraged me to apply for this job. And so I did. So Linda is the reason that I I think have this job. Martha was the executive director at that time and had decided to retire. She wasn't removed. She chose to go. Well, that's what and I. That was my story. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's the story I've always heard, Martha. So well, that's what I'm gonna. I'm gonna keep telling. And Jean was, in addition to having been the executive director before, as were Linda and Martha, was on the hiring committee that hired me and then was on the board for my first year. So I feel just tremendously grateful to these three people for the, the path that you laid at Lake Agassiz Arts Council, which then became the Arts Partnership, and also for the personal role that you played in my life. My gosh, if someone had told me almost 11 years ago where these almost 11 years would go, I would not have believed it. So it's just, I'm thrilled to be with the three of you. And I believe that you each individually know how grateful I am to you for the roles that you've played personally and professionally, but it's fun to be able to have this conversation together and to celebrate these 50 years. We're not the only executive director CEOs of this organization, but we are four of, I don't know, seven or eight, I think. There have not been that many, if I'm correct. Although, Linda, you served longest ago as executive director, so maybe you wanna start and just sort of give us when you served and I, I like Ethan's point of what are the what are the highlights of your time or or the time that you have been with the organization? Sure. When I served as executive director from uh, 1990 to 1993, the position of executive director and uh, office assistant were part time, and at that time there were no individual artist members. It was just an umbrella organization of nonprofit arts organizations, and the board consisted of a representative of each one of those organizations, either the executive director mm. or a board chair or a longtime you know, lead volunteer. So the monthly board meetings we would have to have in a very large room because there'd be 30 some people there. And it was always a fun time to hear what everybody was doing. Um, but the scope and the reach of the organization was was much smaller. I remember during my time, we tried to do a lot of work to uh, just be more of a publicizer of the arts. We put out some brochures. We put some uh, printed materials in the schools that showed all the organization's offerings for kids and that sort of thing. And Linda, did um, did the City of Fargo money come in while you were with Lake Agassiz Arts Council, or was that that happened in your time? Correct. That actually predated me. So uh, the Arts Partner or the Arts Council was already a regranter of Fargo oh, and okay. Moorhead money. Uh, oh, West Fargo wow. hadn't happened yet. Okay. But what we did on my watch was we formalized it a bit. We revamped, we brought in a consultant and revamped the process and the application form and just just tightened up the whole process so that the cities felt, uh, I think, felt more positively about it. Well, that has been, um, I mean, I think all four of us would say that that has been instrumental to the success 
and the longevity of this organization. Um, not that that money is guaranteed because no funding is ever guaranteed, but it is relatively stable, has stayed stable. Um, I, I often tell people that the first major piece of mail I got after Martha left and I was sitting at that desk, I think I'd been there four or five days, when the city of Moorhead sent me a letter saying they were going to stop our funding because everybody was kind of still reeling from 2008. And I remember calling the board chair, Eric Runestad, and Martha, and I was in tears. I felt like, oh my gosh, I haven't even been here a week, and I've already ruined the organization. Um, and, you know, the rational part of me understood it wasn't about me. But wow, wow, that felt daunting. And we were able to restore 90% of that funding and have kept it all of this time. So uh, thank you for doing that work, Linda, because it has been, wow. I don't know where we would be or if we would even still be here had that piece of it not been a, a core foundation of our work. Uh, Dana? Yeah. Uh, and Jean will verify this. That happened on and off. Oh, really? There was, there was it, periodically there would be that concern from, from the cities about, about the funding, but I think, and Jean would, would agree with me in our time there that uh, I was always impressed that no matter what the what their concerns were, they always came through. Yeah, and that to me spoke to uh, a goodly portion of the city council and city commissions that always had, you know, the arts in their pocket. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they, were, they they saw the value. Not everybody always did, right? But but there were enough of them that always did that 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 funding always came through in the end. And I was always. Oh, I did not know that, Martha. I was, I was impressed. You know, no, you're not the only one that had that scare. <laughs> <laughs> that makes me feel a little better. I wish I'd known it in 2010. <laughs> well, and I will add that um, I don't really know how the cities of Moorhead and West Fargo, where, where that allocation falls in their budget, but during my time on the city commission, between somewhere between 2004 2008 it would have been the first two years when Bruce Furness was still mayor we solidified on the city side where those funds were coming from we established a one mill that would go to the arts and and uh, social services so um, also had a hand in stabilizing the the city side of things yeah and you know I I know that now um, I, the arts partnership is a line item in the city of Fargo, and it is not a line item, I don't believe, in either Moorhead or West Fargo, but it, still, that relationship is very strong. I feel really fortunate to be connected to the three mayors, to city council members and commissioners from each city, um, and I agree with you, Martha. There's, it's okay for, for some of them to question the value of it as long as we have enough who know that the value is clear and continue to support it. And I, I don't know what the, how how big, how big of a part West Fargo is playing now, but when they came in, uh, you know, I had I had worked with Rich to, to try to get that going, and they came in pretty small, but you know, mm -hmm. they just they just kept at it. And I think they I think they've continued to grow mm -hmm. in their in their contribution, and um, you know, kudos to Rich for getting that started. Yep, absolutely. So Jean Okerlund, you would be second longest from the current role. I don't know how to say that grammatically correct. I'm the oldest too. <laughs> well, perhaps, but uh, certainly also perhaps the liveliest of the five of us on this call, if we're going to get right down to it. But Jean, what years did you serve as director of Lake Agassiz Arts Council? I, I was worried you were going to ask me that because I was trying to figure that out. Uh, I'm not sure what those years were. It was sandwiched between right before you, uh, well, before uh, Martha, uh, for three years. And Martha, when were you on? Oh, Martha, you're muted. A lot of people like that to be the case. Um, <laughs> I think I came in 2002. Okay. That well, makes would have been sense. Three years before that, then. Yeah. Yeah, I had I had uh, spent about 26 years with the Fargo Schools as cultural resource director, and 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 when they asked about possibilities I had our guests had let some information drop that I was thinking of retiring at that point and and uh, they asked whether there'd be any interest in, in taking over the position uh, which was half time at that point too 
which I thought would be, oh, would work out really nicely. But, you know, and I was quite excited about that because, you know, we had the learning bank, we've had a number of programs that we worked through uh, the arts project, you know, over, over the years. And so I knew all the arts organizations and, and pretty much all the, the people that were in, in management positions and so forth and, and saw the values that they had in terms of inputting in terms of the educational system, you know, and, and the, the learning bank is probably, the, I think, one of the greatest things uh, that really turned kids on to the arts, to having an opportunity to be exposed to so many different groups within the community. And uh, so when I had made the decision to do that, uh, David Flowers said, well, Oakland, he said, you know, you could, you, you, yeah, I know you're going to retire, but you could retire and, and work half time with the Fargo schools and work up, you know, to, to a thousand hours of, and you can pick and choose anything you want from your job uh, for that other half. And I thought, well, <laughs> I guess I couldn't turn that down. <laughs> so, so I ended up have kind of, so it actually worked kind of neatly because, you know, we were so, so tied in with, with the council at that particular point. And then being on the other side of it, it was really easy to, to even tighten up that relationship and uh, allow the students to even grow from, from the value of, of the arts in the community. So that's kind of how I got into it at that particular point. It was a, it was a wonderful three years uh, and a, a whole different experience that I would, would never give up, you know. Jean, do you think you're the only man who's led this organization? Uh, hmm. I, I would think so. I've, I've not heard of any others. Yeah, I probably am, yeah. Linda, who took the job after you? I'm trying to remember. It was someone I didn't know very well. Uh, uh, her name just escapes me. When when did Gail have the job? After that woman, right? I think so. I think Gail was right before Martha. Is that right? No, oh, Jean, Jean was right Jean before Jean. Martha. Uh, so, there, there was another gal that was before Jean. Um, uh, she was the one who had the <laughs> created the big um, gay, uh, well, not, not, not gala, but. Uh, uh, honoring <laughs> names escape me. <laughs> it's all right. I, it's a, it yeah. was a silly question. I shouldn't yeah. have asked but, it. I'm sorry. There, there was another gal that was there for a year or two and uh, did a, a lot of um, uh, advocacy for um, for the Lake Agassi Arts Council in terms okay. of visibility. Okay. Um, so then Martha, you came in. Yeah. And how did you get to the organization? Well, Jean was leaving. Uh, Steve Stark was on the board and uh, he, he told me that the, uh, that the, that the, the job was open and, um, and asked me to apply. So uh, I did. And why well, am I glad I did? <laughs> yes, because you are the second longest serving executive director behind yeah, me, I think. Yeah, because yeah. apparently I got a lifetime yeah. sentence at the rate I'm yeah. going. <laughs> it was a, it was a part-time job. Uh, uh, it, you were the only one I think has been a full-time employee. I think so too. Yeah. And you know, I only applied because it said it might be part-time. I wasn't looking for full-time work. <laughs> no, I don't think I would have applied. So either, yeah. yeah, it was a good oh. thing that they said that. But I, I always felt, you know, in the years I was there, I thought, you know, there's room here for a full-time position. I wasn't interested myself in full-time full -time work, but uh, it just seemed like there was, the growth of the organization to me seemed to, to be benefited by a full-time position. I, I use that example all the time, Martha, when I'm talking with boards who are trying to decide if they should have any paid staff. I always say, look, the Arts Partnership got where it got before I came in because it had a part-time uh, office person and a part-time executive director. And anyone who got the job full-time could have taken it. I mean, I, I, it's not, I don't think our growth has been necessarily because of me. I think I mean, in large part, it's been because it's a full-time position. And so it is what I devote my working days to. And I think that that just, there's just no question that when you have someone who's got that kind of energy and focus behind it, it's going to grow the organization. If 
if things are moving at all in the right direction. And, and there's, there's a time when that's right. Yeah. Um, and it, 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 felt, it felt like the organization and the potential of the organization had grown to that point. Maybe some years before that, it, 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 it couldn't have done it. Maybe it could if it with her, if, if, yeah. you know, if the circumstances would have been right for that. But. Well, so Martha, time. sorry, Jean, let me just say, just to wrap up Martha's tenure there. Um, first of all, Martha, your um, Zoom box says your name is John Grace. So I'm just well, going to say, this uh, yeah. is Martha Keeler Olson. Yeah, yeah I, that is. I, yeah, I probably should change that. Um, it's all right. I just don't <laughs> want people to wonder why I'm calling uh, someone named John name, Martha. Uh, let's see. I, I, use, I got this for a church responsibility. Okay. And so he's actually the owner of it. Um, okay. Anyway, Martha, I think in your time, the two big things that I know of that you shepherded would be the Heard About the Prairie mm -hmm. massive undertaking, which we are still enjoying the fruits of today, and the Arts Lab experience, which I think really was instrumental in helping the board think about what the trajectory of this organization can and should be. You know, I, I really wish I could take credit for those. <laughs> well, you can because you yeah, had the. There's only one thing title. that I can really take credit for, and that is the the name. I, I thought of the name. I'll get I'll give myself. Well, the name is good. Yeah. So we we made that name change in there too, but if if it hadn't been for Doug Burgum, who approached me about uh, doing heard about the prairie, it, I would I would never have thought, you know, this is something we could do. It just seemed, but he wanted to do it and he gave us $100,000 to get started, which made it so much easier because then we could go out and do the work already knowing that we had the financial foundation to, to get it started. So, you know, uh, I'll take credit for being a worker bee, but um, uh, without, without that support, from Doug, it, it never would have happened. And Arts Lab, um, again, another opportunity that just uh, presented itself. Uh, I'll take the credit for applying for it, but um, you know, that offering from the state of Minnesota and the Bush Foundation, you know, was remarkable. Um, so, yeah, it was absolutely yeah. remarkable. And uh, Sharon, uh, Rodney Bash, who facilitated that was absolutely, to me, she's the best of the best in that business of facilitating arts development, arts organization development. She is just brilliant. Yeah. I would agree. I would agree. So, Jean, I cut you off. I'm sorry. Oh, that's okay. Go ahead. Oh, okay. So, um, then I came in in 2010, Martha. Yeah, what the heck have you done? Well, <laughs> you know what's funny? I can't really tell you anything right this minute. Uh, I mean, we've done some nice stuff. We've had some really nice growth. The community has been, I think, uh, very kind to the organization in these 10 years. And we've had great boards and um, I've had outstanding staff and we really have had fabulous growth. I mean, when I started, I was full-time. I had a part-time office person and now there are four full-time and one part-time person um, and that's good growth in 10 years in a community that hasn't you know rained down copious amounts of money so um, I've been very pleased with our growth and uh, you know feel really lucky to have shepherded the organization through these past 10 plus years yeah, and I now Linda's board chair. Sorry, Ethan. Yeah, what about Linda? No wonder we're still rolling. Yep. I, you know, I want to give I want to give credit to another person who I helped me a great deal. Speaking of boards, I was also very appreciative of the particularly the primary partners, mm -hmm. uh, the mm -hmm. arts organization leadership that served on the board in the years I was there. They were very supportive. They were very engaged. Uh, very helpful and very much carried that tradition of the arts organizations coming together and sharing and developing. Um, but I, I, I think Carol Schlossman, uh, she, she and I had some conversations and it was really her sort of seed that expanded the partnership mm -hmm. 
uh, and and got us in got the organization moving in a different direction with individual artists um, and 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 so you know I I am so happy with how things have developed over over the years but I, I just got to say I am so appreciative of the people that came to my to my side mm. and, and helped me do whatever it is I did in those years I was there. And I feel the same way. We, we really had a strong board and uh, without their support, you know, nothing would have happened. And Jean and Jean and Linda, I give credit to, to, you know, I did, I felt like you did Dana when I sat in that office. Oh my God. You know, what do I do? You know, Jean spent many hours for a period of time help shepherding me through particularly the financials. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, and, and I remember sitting down with Linda and picking her brain and getting her insight. And, you know, one of the more creative, these, these two are amongst the most creative people in Fargo Moorhead, I gotta say. Well, so I, I agree. To, I have to confess when, uh, when I sat at that desk for the first time, uh, I was pretty young, like had just turned 30. And um, this was my first nonprofit job. I had only been a choir director and voice teacher and so forth, music teacher. And when I applied for the job, it was because the chair of the music department at Moorhead State called because I, I was at the end of a one year sabbatical replacement. I had nothing in front of me and he said, you should apply for this job. When I went in for my job interview, I did not know what the numbers and letters 501c3 meant. No lie. I could not have been greener. And fortunately, um, the organization had signed up for a one week intensive grant grantsmanship training. I think, Gene, you were in on that class uh, from the Learning Bank. And we learned not only how to write grants, but kind of we learned basically the meat and potatoes of nonprofits. And if I hadn't had that, intensive training and reading the file cabinet from front to back. Ay, ay, ay. So <laughs> talk about board members and organizations helping. I remember Liz, Elizabeth Hanaher coming in and showing me how to set up a filing cabinet. I mean, pretty basic. So I think we all Oh, I all could still have, use that lesson. I just have <laughs> staff who do it. Yeah. I think we all have, um, uh, we're all standing on pretty big shoulders. Well, and speaking of other people that help, Pam Rue is my first assistant, and I've never known oh, wow. a person who could do so much work in so little time. She was the most efficient person I've ever known, and 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 yet creative. And and my only regret is that she and I never sang a sang a duet together. Oh, and, that so, is too bad. There's still time, Martha. Well, I think we should have, you know, well, my old voice is, ain't what it used to be. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, she, she, she was tremendous and uh, cre credit to her for sure. Well, and pa was, Paulette, Paulette, my, 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 yeah. the, the one who left when I resigned. Oh my gosh. She just, yeah. how, how these people filled in Boy, filled in my never mind. Forget, never forget when we when we interviewed Dana. I mean, when she walked out of the room afterwards, we were kind of blown away, and we wondered whether we could actually keep control of this woman, you know, <laughs> because she was. Uh, guess so, what? What she you was can't go so on top of things, you know, and just anxious to get going. And we had, you know, of course, the other other uh, people that had applied were 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 all really strong in various ways but uh, the enthusiasm that she had just kind of and we kind of we we kind of looked at each other and you know we love this woman but i mean do we dare take a chance that she's just, just going to carry us all into the ditch <laughs> <laughs> giddy up <laughs> <laughs> and uh in the end of course it was we were all yeah we just this kind of enthusiasm is exactly what what the arts need and uh, we, I've just been marveling in, er, ever since Dana, you stepped into that position with all the wonderful things that are happening. I mean, it's just, it's just been, the seeds were there and, and you've been giving a lot of the fertilizer to it and it, it's, it's sprouting. It's, I mean, this particular tree has got arms on it now that extend out, you know, we, it gives a shade to us all, so to speak. Oh, that's, that's lovely, Jean, thank you. <laughs> I, I tell people a lot. I will never forget. I know where I was sitting. 
I even know what I was wearing when you called to offer me this job because I remember getting it, getting that call and hanging up. And the salary was significant for this little organization, but tiny. tiny. And, and I remember because I was gasping for air financially. I'd been in my house for two years. I, I mean, we were, I needed this job. And I remember wondering how I could ever spend all that money. And it was such a tiny amount, you know what I mean? It was just like, I, it, my, whole, my whole perspective, the reason I came in with, you know, 74 trainfuls of energy was because that's all I had. You know, I'll never forget Carol saying to me, well, you know, how, how do you manage budgets? And I remember thinking, are you crazy? I basically live in income-based housing. I don't manage budgets. I try to be able to afford groceries. You know, so you're just like, I just was pulling stuff left, right, and center. Well, that's, that's, perfect, nothing. For, that's perfect for a nonprofit. Well, or, clearly or, it, it, it worked out just fine, but yeah. <laughs> fit right in. Yeah, that's true. That's true. You don't want someone who's comfortably financial. Remember having soul-searching conversations with, a couple of my dearest friends who were uh, leaders of arts organizations when I had the executive director job. And at the time, like I said, the, the reach of this organization just wasn't that great. Um, everybody was operating off of shoestrings. And at that time, the Arts Council's board, I'm saying Arts Council because it was Lake Agassiz Arts Council when I was there, philosophically really opposed that us as an organization do any kind of fundraising because that would be seen as in competition with our member. Yeah. And so our only operating money was really our state grant um, from North Dakota Council on the Arts, uh, a share of the city's money, a percentage. And I think that was about it. There were a couple other things, donations that just kind of floated in. And I remember thinking you know, if this pie is so small, and are we really doing much of anything that benefits the organizations? Should we exist? And I just remember having this existential question almost the whole time I was at the Arts Partnership. And I, I think we did some good things and, and uh, you know, could point to some things we did that were worthwhile. But I just remember thinking, you know, are, should we really exist? Or would this little bit of money be better spent just getting the middleman out of the way. And so to see the community impact and the seat at the table and the public footprint and the presence in the media and all the things that we used to just, you know, if we could even imagine it, we kind of poo pooed it and laughed at it like, <laughs> like that's ever going to happen. It's just so astonishing to see what has happened over those decades. So uh, bravo to everybody, but especially so, to Dana, because I do believe she pulled this with her energy and her vision and her tenacity, pulled this organization from kind of a part-time sleepy support organization into a really powerful force in the community, which I think we always hoped it would be someday, but now it is. Well, and I'd like to say too that, that one of the things that, you know, we did a, 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 a survey, uh, Kara Sloshman spearheaded a survey for us. And one of the things that came out of that was, and, and I know this is dear to your heart, Linda, because I think this is where you felt that this organization could have the most impact was its advocacy for the arts. And, you know, we, we talked about what advocacy meant. And, you know, I saw it coming from a lot of different directions. One was the promotional aspect of advocacy and then working in the, in, with the, the city governments and the state uh, agencies to, to, to have a stronger support for the arts, to make it more fundamental to our uh, vision as a community. And that, that was kind of a hard sell sometimes. But um, I, I think that, that uh, getting that input from uh, the people that involved in the say were uh, Linda and others to really pay attention to that advocacy part uh, was was very important that, that, and and I think that's kind of driven 
the development of the organization, advocating for the arts, not only to get funding, but to get the arts out uh, more visible in the community, saying, yes, here we are. Yes, we are here all the time. Yes, yeah. you see us, but you don't see us. And, and making that visibility even stronger. And, and I, so I, 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 I've appreciated the input from people like uh, Linda and Jean and others who were part of the, the Lake Agassiz Arts Council vision of the arts organization. Just setting that stage and, and keeping the organization focused on that part of the arts partnership. You know, I, I think uh, I, one of the things that, that blew me away uh, when I when I stepped in this position was the amount of activity that was happening in in the community. I mean, I was aware of the larger groups because we, we were, were much closely attached, but I had no idea all the small kinds of activities that were happening. And when we put together we, what we called an arts menu at one particular point, and I made I made a list. We had a list. It was it was single line, two pages, of what was happening every month. And then there was always an interactive. Uh, part that they could actually get to the organization, but uh, most of my friends always wondered why I moved to Fargo. You know, if I was really a lover of arts and, and, and wanted to, you know, be close enough to the cities to participate, which when we were living in Wisconsin, we were. And and uh, I sent this menu out in our in our Christmas newsletter, and I'll never forget the amount of responses I got back saying, "Is all this actually happening in Fargo, North Dakota?" And I said, you don't realize, you just don't realize. And the quality, it's not just that there's a number of accurate, it's the quality of, of what we have here that we, we need to always elevate and appreciate. And it's just, uh, yeah, I mean, that, I, I bet you I got 30 or 40 responses from Christmas letters when they, when they looked at that and were just blown away that this was happening in Fargo, North Dakota, you know? Get out. Yeah, we live in a we live in a sometimes challenging but ultimately very rich place. Culturally rich, um, among many other ways to define that. And I think I think that there's just a sense of gratitude amongst us for having gotten to play a part in um, just helping people to know about it, to have access to it, to be able to participate in the arts to make sure that we are reaching as broad a base as we can so that anybody who wants to bump up against the arts either from an audience or a performance aspect has that chance and that that's just a very rare thing i think you know you don't need to be an amazing anything to get to be part of the arts in this community and that's incredible and that was a, oh, i'm sorry yeah, Jean. It was also reflected in the school board, uh, in the support that they had for the arts programs. I mean, we had our 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 programs from everything from symphony orchestra to band to to, to the visual arts. The support that we got was really much higher than anything that was going on in this whole upper area here, as far as the Midwest is concerned. And that was pretty consistent. Even when they went through some real tight budget times, we did not get cut. In, in a inappropriate ways. I mean, it was every always balanced, and it was always brought back up again once the funds were there. So it, it showed in, in in our educational structure too, as well as the community. Well, that's where it comes from. If you don't have access as a child, it's hard to value it as an adult. Not impossible, but hard. And it's why things like Learning Bank and getting kids to concerts and, and live events is so important because it may be their only opportunity to ever yeah. have that sort of sublime artistic experience. Well, being a parent with children who went through the Fargo Public School System and their, the offerings available to them through the arts, you know, the, the, the jazz music program, which my son was involved in, the theater program, which my daughter was involved in. Wow, it, it was just, it, it was just a, a real gift. I did want to add to when talking about quality, one of the personal gains that I, that I received from working with the Arts Partnership was an opportunity to work in the community in ways that I probably wouldn't have if I hadn't had that opportunity. And what I learned, not only in the arts community of the 
with really good people who really cared about the arts in this community were other community people, leaders and citizens who loved Fargo, Moorhead and West Fargo, who really cared about making a contribution. It, it, was, it was gratifying to see the depth and breadth of the people who really care about this community. And that's why there is such quality here. Because quality people really care and then they, and, and then they express that in, in many ways. Fertile soil. Absolutely. Yeah. Literally and figuratively. <laughs> that was a film that we did. Remember it was called Fertile, was it Fertile Soil, Fertile Valley? I can't remember now. It was all about the fertility of, of the earths in the Fargo-Moorhead area. I can't, was, that was a few years ago. But the, oh, yeah, I'll have to see if it, I can track that down. It was a pretty down. impressive film at that point, which really exposed the strengths of this community from, a, from the, an art standpoint. But My dad was a farmer, and when he came to visit me and saw the, the, the fertile soil that you grow stuff in, he thought, oh my, he started to drool. Oh, yeah. Goodness, you can really grow stuff there. You three, you know how grateful I am for you, both, as I've said, professionally and personally. The organization would not be at all where it is had you three not invested, not once, not twice, but multiple times in your careers and in various capacities in this organization, the entire sector is better for you having played your part in this. And I'm really honored and humbled to be in the mix with you um, and look forward to see what the next 50 years at the Arts Partnership looks like. Whole groups of people will not know who the four of us are, but they will benefit from the work that we've done. And so I feel really grateful for that. Thank you, Dana. Thank you, Dana. Thank you so much. Together. Thank for all you, you all. Do. It was just lovely to see you. So, so lovely to see you. Everyone stay safe. Take care. And um, yes. Virtual hugs. Happy end of 2020. <laughs>